is not just to entertain an idea. What idea? The idea must produce in you this feeling which is a sensation, but it must be a feeling. What would the feeling be like if it were true? You dwell upon that until you catch that feeling. As Churchill said, that the mood determines the fortunes of people rather than the fortunes, the mood. The mood precedes the fortune. So what would you want in this world? Well, contemplate it. What would the feeling be like if you had it? What would it be like if it were true? You can do it. There is no flower in your hand, but you can feel the soft velvet feeling of a rose. You can smell a rose, though it's not physically present. Try it. Try all these things with the inner man. And when you can actually feel it, so that you raise your imagination to the point of sensation, to vision, then the whole thing is done. It's done in a way you do not know it's going to happen. So tonight you want a bigger job, you want more money in this world, you want, and you name it, well then, it may be a thief who is going to aid you in the getting without knowing he's doing it. Don't judge him, don't condemn him, just simply you go forward knowing that I have ways and means that the physical man knows not of. My ways, the inner man's ways, are past finding out. And you simply go forward in the assumption that you have already achieved what now is only a wish as far as the world is concerned. But you enter into the wish as though the wish is already fulfilled. So tonight is a practical night. Do you know this night what you want? Really what you want? Do what I did when I was locked out completely from marrying the girl I wanted to marry. I simply assumed that she slept there, I slept here, and I went sung to sleep, and in one week, my wife did an act which certainly I must forgive. In the eyes of the world, she is condemned for taking what she did not pay for. And yet, because of that act, I got my freedom. Then who is the culprit? Am I not? If there is any culprit, I am. If there is any culprit in this world, it is God. There is nothing but God. God is doing all in this world. He created everything in this world. And so I, if in me he is the second man, and the second man is my imagination, and that is God. For man is all imagination, and God is man and exist in us, and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination, and that is God himself. Well, if, if I in my imagination slept as though I am happily married to a girl that the laws of New York State said I could never get because of my entanglement with my first wife, and in one week she performed an act which was judged harshly by society. And yet she was the instrument of my getting my freedom to marry the girl who now is the mother of my daughter. So how can I blame her who performed that act? She was in a state. And who did it? I did it. I did it by simply assuming that I was free and happily married to a girl that the state of New York said I could never marry because of the ancient laws that restricted my desire to get a freedom in that state. So you forgive everyone in this world. They're all playing their part. So in my own case, I have seen thieves. I have seen all kinds of people play their part. They were instruments in the fulfillment of my desire. So how can I ever condemn all? 
So tonight, you just simply boldly declare that you are the man. You are the woman that you want to be. And walk in that assumption as though it were true. And then let all these sleeping states play their part. May I tell you, in spite of what they appear to be, they are sound, sound asleep. For God plays all the parts in the world. There is nothing but God. And say, I am that God. That is the Lord Jesus within you. That is your immortal being that cannot die. He cannot die. That is your eternal self when you say, I am. Imagination is not some vague essence. It is a body, a reality. An infinite body that is so perfect when it's awakened that in its presence everything is made perfect. But while it is awakened, it exercises that power and draws into its world everyone that can play the part for its fulfillment of its dream. So here, I hope you heard it clearly. I hope I've made it as clear as I can because tonight should be a very practical night. That you will go out knowing who you are. You are a dual being. But the first man is of the dust. And to dust he returns. That is the man of earth. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And he cannot die. That's your own wonderful human imagination. It cannot die. But it sleeps. It sleeps embodied in this tomb. And one day it will awaken. As I've told you in the past, the symbolism of Scripture will surround you. It's perfect. It is true. Everything told you in Scripture as to his birth, you are going to experience. And then your imagination awakens. And you trust no one but it. Only this being within you do you really worship. 